I do. Today I'm gonna teach you how to create a simple tag game on Scratch. So, in tag, it's a it's a game where there's two players and one point person tags a, another person and the person who is tagged is it. So, in a computer game that I'm gonna teach you how to make, we're gonna create a simple tag game with a computer trying to chase you and then if you can't get hit it's gonna be game over so first of all we're gonna name this project tag game then we're gonna name our sprite player you don't want sprite one because sprite one is not gonna be a player so next we're gonna delete costume two and delete costume one we name this costume player and we're just going to create a simple red square with no outlines. There you go. Now we're going to add the arrow key controls. So in arrow key controls, um, so when you press a certain arrow key, the player is going to that it's actually moving. So when the key right arrow is pressed, it's going to go go right by three pixels if the left arrow key is pressed then we're gonna move the player by minus three pixels so whenever you want to make your player go left we're just gonna use a negative number now up moving up so we're gonna change our y by three not the x it's gonna be y because y is the up and down page now if the down arrow key is pressed then we're gonna change our y by minus three now fine now the final thing we're gonna do for the arrow key script is to put the player in a certain coordinate co point on the screen when we start the game. So we're going to put it to x0, y0, which is the coordinate point that we're seeing right over here. Now if you try testing the game, you should be able to move your player very smoothly and be able to press more than one key at once. Great. Now we're gonna set the guy's size to 50 and we're gonna create a new sprite and call it computer. This remember this is gonna be the guy that's gonna chase you. So and we're gonna make this guy a different color than the player. So copy the red square and paste it and we're gonna make it blue. Shrink that to 50%. Now it's got to chase the player and when it starts it should be slightly above the player so the player gets a head start. So so we're going to add a code so if the player is to the right of the computer then the computer is got to move right because it knows that it's to the right of the player. So change x by, let's see, 1 so the player can have a head start without bumping into the opponent too quickly. Now if it's to the left of the, the player, I mean, I mean if, if the player is to the left of the computer, then it's going to move left. Remember, a player can move more than one key at a time, so I'm using if statement, not if else, because if you use if else, um, it's only one script can be activated at a time. So we're gonna do the same thing with. Okay, and the down. Okay. Y position of player is less than the computer's Y position. Change Y by minus 3. Great. Now if you try testing the game, the player should be following you. Oop. 
we forgot to change my things to one. If you have uh, forgotten to do that, you do that for yourself. Okay, now if you see the player will slow, the you'll move fast, but the computer will just slowly chase you. Okay, that will be the chasing. But there's a problem because the player can go through the computer without getting tagged. So we're going to fix that. So we're going to add another if statement to the player. And this if statement is going to say if it's touching the computer, it got tagged. So we got to end the game. So we got to make the player disappear. So the player knows that you lost. And we're going to put a show at the beginning of state. Stay disappeared at the beginning of the game. Now we're going to create a new broadcast message. Call it game over. This broadcast message is going to be used for the computer to disappear. And later the backdrop is going to change too. So in the computer script, add when I receive game over. Hide so that it disappears along with the player. Now if you test the script, try bumping into the computer. Both of them should disappear. If this doesn't work, try to make sure that your script matches mine. Okay, now that the chasing part works, it, since the game starts automatically, sometimes you might not be ready for the player to chase you. So we're going to add like a play button and that play button is going to be the space key. So we're going to put it before the forever loop. So when the space key is pressed, the forever loop will be activated. We're going to do the same thing for the computer so it doesn't start chasing you when you, when you didn't hit the play button. Okay, that one little block will make it that Oh. And we have to add a show at the beginning of the computer too. Whatever the player can do, so can the computer. Except, of course, your controls. Okay, now if you test the script, if you press the space key, then your game will start. But, but what if you share the project and no one else knows that you have to press the space key? Well... There's going to be backdrops that tell you press space key to start, it's playing, and game over. So first we're going to replace backdrop 1 with a backdrop, backdrop name setup. So this backdrop is going to be the one that's saying press space to start. So fill your backdrop with a grayish color. And choose any font. I'll just use this and type in press space to start. Okay, now grow the text. And if you want, you can add a box around the text. Like this. And, and then click back forward. Okay. Now we're going to add a backdrop where the player is playing. There's going to be no text on this. And let's just make it a color similar to white. And rename that play. Okay, now it's time for the game over backdrop. Make it around the same color as the other backdrop. The setup background, it doesn't have to be the same color. And then type in game over with whatever type text font you want. Now, I recommend you to add a box. It's going to look better like that. Great. Like I told you, back, forward, and the box will be there. Great. Now if we start the game though, it's saying game over instead of press space to start. So, we have to fix that. Okay, let me just name this backdrop game over. And we're going to add the script for the background. 
So we made the background say press. I mean, we have to press the space key to start when you when you start the game, right? So in the beginning, we're gonna switch the background to setup, and then when when you know that the space key is pressed, then the game started, and the background has to switch to play. And then if you bumped into the guy. We created a broadcast message named "Game Over." You can just easily stick another switch backdrop to and do "Game Over." Now, if you test the game, the backdrop should flow along with the game, and when you bump into the computer, "Game Over." Great. But now the play the play screen looks boring. And maybe we'll add some obstacles like walls. So we're just gonna make four four little rectangles like this, and we're gonna make we're gonna make slight adjustments to the arrow keys. So we have to make a script so it the player does not go through the walls. So we're gonna make the guy go in the opposite direction of the wall very quickly when you touch it, so you can't see it. So when you when you went right and hit the wall, it's gonna very quickly move you back left. And when you went left and you touched the wall, it's gonna automatically move you right. And we're gonna do the same thing with the y-axis. Okay. If you're touching, so make sure make sure that you use the same color for the walls, because because your you player might go through the walls in different colors. But you can still fix that by putting a bunch of ores around here with touching color or touching color or. But that'll just make you make. Make some limits to adding colors, so I recommend you just adding one type of wall. Okay, almost there, and there. Well, now I didn't add the wall detection for the computer, so the computer is gonna go through the walls, and we have to stop that. Again, opposite direction really quickly. If touching color, then change x by minus one. If touching color, change x by one. If touching color in the Y, oh, and make sure to move your game over broadcast so it doesn't get stuck between the scripts. If you have a mouse, then you can just right click on your script area and do click clean up blocks. But right now I don't have a mouse, so I just move the script like where the script will never reach. So, so always make sure that your script is never touching another script, because that might ruin your game, kind of because of lag and stuff. Okay, now that I completed wall de detection, when I play the game, your player bumps into the walls, and let's say I go behind the walls, then the computer gets stuck in the walls. Great. Now let's test this game from the beginning. So press space to start. I run away from the player. Ah,、uh, there you go. Oh, I bumped into the player. Game over. Great. Thank you for watching this tutorial. See you next time on my YouTube channel. Bye.